Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the sixth episode of the Flyers All Access Show right here on Rogers TV. I'm your host, Matt Malloy, and do we ever have a special show for you this evening? Last week, we went behind the scenes and showed you how Gander Flyers trainer Paul Matheson prepares for a road trip. And this week, we have a brand new segment, which is surely going to be a fan favorite. And welcome back, everybody, to the sixth episode of the Flyers All Access Show right here on Rogers TV. I'm your host, Matt, and if it looked like I've moved since the break, it's because I have. And I moved so we could fit three of our panelists onto our set, and we're going to see if we can engage them in some fiery Gander Flyers hockey talk. So, I'm going to introduce you to our panelists. From our far left, we're going to start with Paul Matheson. Paul is a trainer of the Gander Flyers, and he spent six years volunteering at the major midget level with the Central Ice Pack. His son, Ryan, plays defense for the Flyers, and his other son, Andrew, a goalie, is playing for the Travelland RV Storm of the Prairie Junior Hockey League. Thanks, Paul, for joining us. Thank you, Matt. Next, we have the Deputy Mayor for the Town of Gander, a role he's had since 2001. He also strapped down the goalie pads for the Gander Rick Flyers for a few seasons in the Central Newfoundland Hockey League. He played minor hockey here in Gander, and from what I understand, he's always up for some video game hockey. <laughs> he's Deputy Mayor Zane Tucker. Thank you, Zane, for coming here. Thanks for having me. And last but not least, we have the captain of the 1980 Herder winning Gander Flyers. He collected 13 goals and 76 assists for 89 points and 397 penalty minutes in five seasons uh, for the Gander Flyers. He is Bruce Sparks. Thanks, Bruce, for joining us. Great to be here. Uh, Zane, first I've got to ask you, is it uh, PlayStation or Xbox? PlayStation only. All the way? Yeah. And Paul, I'm guessing <laughs> there's got to be some sort of uh, system in your home, PlayStation, Xbox, I'm sure. Xbox all the way. All the way? <laughs> yes. I hit ours yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> all right, gentlemen, we're going to jump right in. The Gander Flyers are officially halfway through the season. Uh, they have eight points, just two points back uh, of a playoff spot. So, Paul, we're going to start with you just because you've seen probably uh, maybe the most games of anybody here. Uh, just give us your first impressions of the Gander Flyers. Well, Matt, it's been an exciting year. The players, uh, the team, the coach, the management, uh, we've all come together. You know, it's a bit bumpy at first with a young team, but uh, every game, every weekend seems to be, uh, you know, the, 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 the teamwork, the, uh, the dressing room, everyone seems to be coming together. And uh, the, the games are very exciting. And really, we've been in, I think, nearly every game we've played. I got to say, I, I was, I, I, don't know, I don't know, I was speechless. I'm speechless now, but I was really impressed with the speed and yeah. the quality of all the players. And, and I, I sat there and watched the, the, the home opener and looked at them and said, I, I don't think I'd be able to fit into this team because yeah. everybody skates so well now. And it's, it's, you know, it's been 30 odd years since I played any serious hockey. And I was, got to say, I'm really impressed with it. And of yeah. course, the, the, their speed is definitely their greatest asset. I don't even think yeah. uh, that's even arguable. But uh, Zane, uh, just talk about some of the improvements you think the team can make probably so far this year. I know they're an expansion team. I don't know if you have any thoughts as to what the team can do to even get better. Well, like Paul was saying, I mean, a team starting out has never played together before. Obviously, there's a lot of challenges, and you got to figure out where everyone is. But I think as the games progress, they've certainly been doing a better job with that. Uh, I've noticed uh, a, a really good improvement in the defense over the uh, last couple of games, and they seem to be doing better there. Uh, the goaltending, to me, is, is doing really well, and they're starting to get some more goals. So I think they're on the right track. If they can keep that trend going, I think they'll be successful and hopefully get in the playoffs. Well, I'm wondering if if the team has met your expectations. Uh, right now they're, they're in uh, last place, but I mean, I'm wondering if they have met your expectations and not off the, off the ice, they have, they have to. I mean, the fan base, they sell out, they're selling merchandise, they're signing autographs, off the ice they're doing great, but on the ice, what do you think? Oh, I think so. Uh, going into this year, uh, we wanted to be competitive. Like, we didn't want to be, uh, you know, uh, we didn't want to lose 10 nothing. you know. Mm -hmm. We yeah. wanted to show that we could compete. Uh, and I think every game we have, I think we've only had a couple of bad periods out of 36 periods we've played. So I think we have met our expectations. We've been competitive. Uh, you can see by the fans' response and the players' response to the fans that I think everyone would agree that we have met our, you know, our initial season expectations. Mm -hmm. Of course you'd like to win. I mean, everyone wants to win. And uh, with win, winning becomes more uh, contagious and, of course, more pressure perhaps too. But uh, I'd like to think that we've met our expectations so I think, far. I think you've exceeded the fans', yes. yeah, fans totally. expectations. Yeah. I know walking between periods and talking to everybody, there's not one person I've, I've bumped into. Mm -hmm. I've only seen a couple of games, but I mean, yeah. everybody is like, man, what an effort. They're, they're on the ball, they're moving, you know. Dennis and company got them moving in the right way. You know, well, good, good point, Bruce. Yeah. And the, the effort, the effort, when the fans see the effort that's put yeah. out, I mean, these guys, young fellas, are really trying hard. You know, and I know for a fact they are because I'm on the bench with them, and they're given 110%, and it's it, the proof is in the pudding, as you can say. 
Oh, and I so. remember being a younger hockey fan in Gander, growing up when the, the Gander Internationals were around for I think it was a year or two. I mean, they got blown at every game. I, I think they won a handful. I mean, so a team to come in and never played together before, and as Paul was saying, to be competitive almost every game, every period, what else can you ask for? They, they've exceeded it, like Bruce was saying. Yeah. And I know for the fan base too, you know, uh, there's a lot of Gander Flyer fans out there. They're called Flyers Nation on Twitter and on yeah. Facebook. Uh, I also understand uh, back in the 80s in the old Gander Gardens, the fans were pretty notorious, pretty pretty spirited, Bruce. Uh, I don't know if you maybe could Spirited, good today. word. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. the correct yeah. word, isn't it? Yeah. A lot yeah. lower to the... I thought it was yeah. for a while. Very yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the old rink, it was, it was really an intimate setting. It was a smaller rink. And and, uh, and uh, I think we were forced to be a rougher team then because, you know, we're, we had our, our had our last change. We had our small rink, and there wasn't a lot of room to move, unlike the new mm. rink, you know. But uh, yeah, oh yeah, you could uh, you could pretty well talk to anybody in the rink from <laughs> wherever you were, on the ice or uh, yeah. <laughs> no, they let you know too, no on certain terms. They, uh, yeah, down I, I, there I heard the, certain yeah. sections. I guess was yeah, it the yeah, more down in the front, up in the corners. Yeah, yeah, they were notorious. Yeah, there was a couple of fellows there that yeah. The, <laughs> If you, weren't, if you weren't doing a good job, they let you know. They let you know. <laughs> yeah. Seems to me that the Flyers have really caught on to Gander and all the community because they love Flyers Nation and they love their fans. Bruce, I wondered if that was like back in the 80s. I mean, was it like them? Was the Flyers fans and the Flyers so, oh, yeah. I guess, interactive yeah, you like couldn't, that? You couldn't move around town. You know, you were known everywhere you went. And there was a core of us, you know, Dennis and Keith Elliott, Tom Ray Fuse, uh, Eddie Philpott, Jimmy Mullet. We were all here in town. You know, every day of the week, right? So you, you, it was hockey, hockey, hockey. And then when you hit the playoffs and get in the finals, it was, you know, just well forget trying to do any work. Right? Yeah, well, anybody, anybody, yeah. anybody, you could be calling on the phone talking to business to somebody, and all they want to know is, you know, hockey. what's going on with the game tonight <laughs> or tomorrow or whatever. You know. Speaking of the fans, too, it seems like the Flyers are attracting everybody. I mean, you got kids that are 10, 11 years old. You know, they're they're they they want autographs. They're watching all the games. You know, they have their own favorite flyer player. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if you guys think that as the Flyers continue to grow and succeed, I wonder if that's going to create more modern hockey players. Is that going to create more kids that want to play hockey because they want to be a flyer in the future, do you think? Well, I would think so. I mean, it's very popular. It's, it's fun. They're seeing how, what can happen if you do play the game of hockey. And maybe the young fellows are seeing, well, gee whiz, maybe I can play the senior hockey with the Flyers down the road in a few years' time. And my son Andrew in Saskatchewan, Dad, he said, when can, you know, when, how old do I have to be to, uh, to play with the Flyers, right? So, I mean, yeah, I think it will. I, I think uh, it'll catch on. And, I, and as far as apparel, I mean, uh, a mother approached me last night at the, state, at the community center. She's, she's hoping to get something of everything that P Papa John sells for her child for Christmas wow. and wants it autographed by all the players. So awesome. uh, I, I think, yes, I think it's a, it'll be a positive for the growth of hockey mm -hmm. in this region. I definitely do. I saw the uh, Seabees play the Cataracts in Grand Falls two years ago. Mm -hmm. Christopher was with the team in playoffs, and I hadn't seen a senior game in forever. But I'd seen a couple of uh, AHL games, and it, it, it was like it going to an AHL mm -hmm. game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? There was 50-50, there was uh, logo stuff to buy, there was between period entertainment, you know, so to the, the local yeah. kids around, the small youngsters, to see mm -hmm. the same sort of thing happening yeah. just right here. And Zane, uh, uh, definitely is creating a, a goal yeah, for them it, to It's go entertainment, for, right? it's not yeah. just a hockey yeah. game. Like you yeah. said, it's a show in terms mm -hmm. of all the, the extra things that really add to it from a yeah. fan's point of view. Yeah. And Zane, of course, now, uh, just from the town's point of view, if you're, if you're going to see more kids want to play minor mm -hmm. hockey, and if the Silver Jets continue to get uh, more skaters, and if the town keeps putting off more functions, uh, like the glow skating that's going on right now right. almost every weekend when the Flyers aren't there, Will we see a second ice surface again? I mean, is, it, is it, it would be gone? nice. I won't commit to it here this afternoon. But it certainly <laughs> would be nice. But uh, you know, having, having said that, if if you if the trends continue and trends are certainly continuing for for youth, we know the size of Gander Academy. And those kids are going to get older, and we certainly know the, the different rec leagues and like I said, figure skating and and some of the new programming that's going on. It's uh, it's something that's going to look at. The big thing is, of course, the operating cost, and we understand the demands there for the peak times, but we look at the other times as well. But uh, as we're going forward now, there's a really good committee in place looking at a multiplex uh, concept. There is a small component of that that will look at the second ice surface. Um, again, it's just something we'll cost to do and we'll have a look at it, mm -hmm. but uh, it will be nice. <laughs> now, guys, we've got about three minutes left, so I've got to ask you, uh, I need to know if the Flyers are going to make the playoffs. Are the Flyers going to make the playoffs as an expansion team? Do they have the power to do it? Are the Flyers going to make the playoffs this year? They can. Well, they, they've beaten the team that they've got to beat this weekend. They've beaten them over there, so... I'll say yes. The next four games are critical yeah. against yeah. Western. Yeah. But now you got to think of it too. I mean, the Flyers are a smaller team. They're expansion team. They're, they're you know they're young. When you're going to take on the Royals and if you're going to take on the Seabees, they're experienced teams. So 
how are the Flyers going to get over that? Because as the season goes on, those teams are going to play the Flyers a lot tougher. I mean, I think the, I think the physical play is going to increase. Yeah. Are the Flyers going to be able to withstand that sort of pressure as a young team? Yes. Yes? And Absolutely. Why? Confidence. Confidence. Young, youthful confidence. Uh, no fear. Blind uh, passion. Yes. Exactly. And you know something else I really noticed about this team that was probably one of the most surprising things? They're calm, cool. They, they don't get rattled. I think for a very young team, you got to remember all these guys are in their early 20s. Yeah. They get down a couple of goals, someone makes a dumb play. They don't, they don't freak out. So, okay, let's learn from it. Let's go back to it. I, I couldn't yeah. believe, it's really impressive yeah. Yeah. for a young group of well, people. you've got a very experienced coach here, too. <laughs> oh, we do. Yes, right? we do. And, I mean, you've got to give a lot of credit. Well, to Gary White and Dennis Lang, I mean, the, the, the both have been so calming. Uh, on the bench, Dennis is a very professional, calm, very knowledgeable coach, and I mean, you know, I, I can't say enough good about. He was what, a calm defenseman too. I could well, and, and you know what? In, 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 on well, the bench, he knows hockey. He's right. Yeah. yeah. And, you know. Yeah. You know, guys. Unfortunately, we could stay here for the next 10, 20, 30 minutes and talk about the Gander Flyers, but unfortunately, we're out of time for this segment. I want to thank each and every one of you guys for showing up here today, for doing this, for answering my tough questions, and I hope you guys have a great Christmas. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. This has been a lot of fun. Thanks right. for the invite. Oh, anytime. Yeah. All right, guys, we need you to stay right there because we're coming right back with our final face-off.